Bhutan has adopted this philosophy to pursue our development pathway, which today many recognize it as being sustainable development. Everything that's, that we do in Bhutan, projects, whether it's a private business, whether it is government projects, whether it's government policies, goes through a screening project program called the GNH Index. And this index basically looks at the benefit of any policy or program to the community. We are graduating from a low LDC country to a middle income country by this year, while at the same time having preserved and conserved our environment and our culture. Bhutan, despite being very small, has shown to the world that we do not need to rush blindly pursuing just economic growth, but at the same time, considering the well-being of the people, our country, and our contribution to the globe at large. Prime Minister Modi rightly said, from being deliberate and mindful utilization and not to pursue mindless and destructive consumption, I think that will destroy the world. The two biggest lessons I would say is one, to move away from the blind pursuit of economic growth. And the second one that I would like to say is that we all, right in Bhutan, right from our leaders, our kings, our prime ministers, the cabinet, the government, we should lead by example and practice what we preach. Welcome to Rice and Ideas Pod. And I have with me His Excellency Tandi Dorji, Minister of Foreign Affairs and External Trade, Government of Bhutan. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Nilanjan. I'm very happy to be here. And let me also thank you for the time that you have given us. Uh, more importantly, when it, we talk about Bhutan, the first and foremost thing that comes to mind is gross national happiness, or the GNH. Yes. Any kind of policy change or policy implementation has to go through this acid test of GNH. Yes. So, and the world talks about it. So, can you just throw light on some of the parameters of the canons of the gross national happiness? Uh, Nilanjan, right at the outset, I would like to say that I'm not an expert on this. However, our majesty, our majesties, the successive monarchs, in particularly our fourth king, who enunciated these wise words to say that gross national happiness is more important than gross development product. And that was in way back in 1972, even before words such as sustainability and climate change were global agendas. And since then, Bhutan has adopted this philosophy to pursue our development pathway, which today many recognize it as being sustainable development. And um, to go through these, um, the concept of GNH, basically it consists of four pillars, there are nine domains and 33 indicators that allow us to evaluate what are government's development programs doing to enhance the well-being of the people. And there are, as I mentioned even during our panel discussion, there are so many examples in which Bhutan has shown what sustainable development is. Our forest cover is one of the highest. We are carbon negative. We are pro uh, promoting, we have banned the use of plastics. We are promoting electric vehicles. The Everything that's, that we do in Bhutan, projects, whether it's a private business, whether it is government projects, whether it's government policies, goes through a screening project program called the GNH Index. And this index basically looks at the benefit of any policy or program to the community. Not only should it bring economic prosperity, but it should also contribute to about preserving the culture or uh, sustaining the environment. If a project or a program is detrimental either to the environment, either to the culture or community vitality, or takes away people's time from recreation and exercise, or reduces the hours of sleep, these things will not be included. And therefore, I think this has served us very well. And today, we are very proud to say that we are graduating from a low LDC country to a middle income country by this year, while at the same time, having preserved and conserved our environment and our culture. I think Bhutan, despite being very small, has shown to the world that we do not need to rush blindly pursuing just economic growth, but at the same time, considering the well-being of the people, our country, and our contribution to the globe at large. So, Excellency, in fact, if I take this cue of uh, sustainable development goals from your last yes. intervention, 
so all you mean to say is that GNH, yes. if adopted in similar settings, yes. can actually further the cause of achieving the SDGs? Yes, definitely, uh, Nilanjan. I think the concepts of GNH have helped us in every sector you look in Bhutan, whether it is education, whether it is health, whether it is poverty reduction, whether it is environment, all the 17 SDGs that, uh, that uh, we have, that the world has chosen to adopt, Bhutan is on track to meet all of those SDGs. Not only are we on track to meet all of the SDGs, as I said, we have also economically progressed from a LDC to a middle income country. And that just shows that GNH has great importance and can be a good example for many of the countries. Mm. If a small country like Bhutan, despite all our challenges, can achieve sustainable development, imagine what the rich countries with all their resources could do. However, we need to change our mindset and move from what Prime Minister Modi rightly said, from being deliberate and mindful utilization and not to pursue mindless and destructive consumption. I think that will destroy the world. Uh, in fact, Bhutan turns out to be a very fascinating example for the world on various accounts. After all, it's a South Asian nation. Yes. And when we think of South Asia, what comes to mind is the hustle and bustle mm. of uh, urbanization, pollution, yes. uh, uh, I mean, huge population. But out here, we find a green island Thank out you. there, right? But at the same time, I mean, it is also a major tourism destination. Yes. So given the fact that you have 70% of your landmass under forests, you're a, a, a carbon negative nation yes. in that sense. Uh, and at the same time, when uh, international tourism is going to be promoted, how do you really reconcile between this kind of a challenge and how do you, uh, of, of, uh, on the one hand, uh, promoting uh, tourists come to coming to your place, promoting development of the nation at the same time, you know, uh, a sustainable environment. So, how yes. do you promote sustainable tourism given the f major forces that are unfolding in the mod modern civilization? Thank you, Nilanjan. I think this is uh, very, very important and crucial for Bhutan because we have been reflecting on our own tourism policy. We have always pursued a policy of high value, low volume, at the same time that um, His Majesty enunciated about GNH and GDP. It was 1974 when the first tourists came to Bhutan. And ever since then, we have always implemented a policy of having a sustainable development fee that is imposed on every tourist that comes to Bhutan so that this sustainable development fee goes back towards preserving the culture, conserving the environment, ecotourism, and providing the services, at the same time going towards social services, such as free education and free health. And now, post-COVID, looking at the world and looking at the impacts of mass tourism, as you rightly said, on the environment, on waste, and uh, on so many other, uh, other problems that has been created through mass tourism, uh, we have reflected and we have initiated a new policy and we have further strengthened our concept of high value, low volume. In this sense, uh, we have made coming to Bhutan a little bit more expensive. Uh, now, the, to visit Bhutan from abroad, dollar paying tourists will have to pay a sustainable development fee of $200 per day. And for those coming from India, we'll have to pay $1,200 per day. But not only is this money being used for, as you said, conserving our environment, making sure that the 72% of our forest is contributing to sequestration of carbon mm. dioxide in our region, but also ensuring that the services that the tourists come get in Bhutan are of high quality. Not only is it safe, but of high quality and that they can appreciate. Imagine, you know, many of the tourists coming, nobody likes to go into crowded places. They want pristine with less number of people so that they can have the freedom to... Uh, freedom and to enjoy being in less crowded places. And this is what Bhutan wants to provide. And we also at the same time want to provide an authentic experience in Bhutan. Unlike many countries in Bhutan, we do not have anything that is projected solely for tourism. All the festivals that you see are part of our tradition and culture. We don't have zoos, for example. Mm -hmm. 
uh, what you see is nature. And so um, for those who feel that this is expensive, you look at many other countries, you would pay the same amount for a room or for a hotel room anywhere in the world. But for Bhutan, if you want an authentic experience and you want to see what we call as um, the new tagline, to believe that there exists an oasis in this region, then you have to come to Bhutan under our new sustainable fee and you'll be contributing towards sustaining the environment. So given this, what will be your, uh, rather, what would you suggest as two major lessons for the world from the Bhutan model of development? The two biggest lessons I would say is one, to move away from the blind pursuit of economic growth. I think we have to look at the non-economic factors. As my king uh, articulated, we must look at the concepts of gross national happiness. That GDP is not the best indicator for progress is well known and it is now accepted worldwide. But what are the alternatives? Perhaps GNH could be one of them. So one is to definitely pursue a pathway that is both sustainable, development and consumption. And the second one that I would like to say is that we all, right in Bhutan, right from our leaders, our kings, our prime ministers, the cabinet, the government, we should lead by example and practice what we preach. For example, in our cabinet in Bhutan, when we have government events, we go only vegetarian food. We do not, we serve only fruits and nuts during our meetings. Uh, try to, we all go into electric vehicles, try to cycle and walk and deduce our consumerism and materialism. I think these are two very, very important uh, examples that I can give among many, many others. Oh. And all this must be backed up by good policies and good regulations so that every government can, can uh, implement those programs that will take their country forward both economically and also socially and environmentally. Thank you. Thank you for these uh, valuable words, valuable intervention. In fact, indeed, it's for the world to learn from the Bhutan model of development, which is absolutely unique and uh, absolutely something that is forward-looking as well. We cannot really confine ourselves looking at very reductionist modes of yes. uh, or de uh, delineations of development in the form of GDP growth. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very time. much, Nilad.